Welcome back to the Cheap Heat Productions podcast with himself again. Okay, I think we're definitely going to need to build you into that intro video. Welcome back again, Mr. Mario Mancini. Thanks, Maurice. You know, after the last podcast, I got uh, several inboxes uh, for other podcasts, but um, we've been on such a trend here, and I'm I'm most comfortable here. So um, I'm not saying this to, you know, blow smoke up your arse, but uh, I, <laughs> arse. I, arse, I turned them down. Um a lot of reflecting um, in the past month, if you will. And um, I've made decisions. So I'm not going to name drop anymore unless it's in a positive way. Okay. You know why? Okay. Because I don't care. I don't care. I don't give a shit. I don't care. Okay. All right. What do I mean by that? I got out of wrestling in 1992, okay, 84 to 92. Yeah. When I tell you, and, and I've been criticized, why didn't you try to go to the WCW? Why didn't you try to go to the Mid-South? Why didn't you try to go to Tennessee? Why didn't you try? Because I didn't want to. I left it behind me. It was done. It was over with, okay? I walked away. And when I walked away, people need to know this. I considered it a bust, meaning I got out of there. I left Huntsville, Alabama on April 26, 1992, and I never went back. And I remember sitting on my couch the next day, and I looked at my dad, and I went, well, that that uh, that didn't go exactly the way I thought it would. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't, okay? Yeah. And – and I got out, and I was I was nobody. And I thought I was nobody when I was in. Nobody. That's the God's honest truth on my kids. I was nobody. You know what? I wasn't selling tickets. You know, nobody was buying, physically buying a ticket to come see me. I knew what my position was. And I, I was no big deal. You know what I mean? And I got out. And I was nothing, nobody. And like I said, I felt like I was nothing and nobody when, when I was in. Do you think, just to cut you off there for a second, that there's more appreciation these days for guys like you and other guys that kind of enhance talents in, in today's world? Like you see it with conventions and people like, like older people that kind of watched the product back then respect you guys immensely. Well, 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 yeah, like I, I said, I, I, I signed on with Scott Wilder to do all of these uh, personal appearances in Kentucky and Tennessee and North Carolina and Pennsylvania, New Jersey. It, it's a million times. But you know what? I have people coming up and shaking my hands, looking at me saying, you are my childhood every Saturday morning without fail. You know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, though. It doesn't because nobody cares. That doesn't matter. It, it doesn't. Does it not matter to you at all that people you know, would I, give I, you a compliment? I, I care, I, you know what? I could care less. It's been proven. It's now been proven. So let me go through the lineage before we – because where you are right now is the end of the show, is the end of the podcast.
It wasn't until 1999 until I got a call to work at the Westchester County Center. And I said, I'm sorry I have to decline. I haven't worked in a ring in seven years. I haven't even thought about wrestling in seven years. The only thing that was on my mind in 1992 is I had a fiancé. I had a six-year-old daughter I was adopting. Okay. I was getting married in 93, going to college in 94 with my sights going on the law school, meaning I, that's all behind me now. Now I got to look toward the future. Yep. I get the obscure phone call. Won't be a good match. I don't have a ring to practice in. I'll be rusty. I'll be stiff. I'll blow up. Won't be good. By the way, just out of curiosity, who will I be working with? Just out of curiosity. I thought he was going to say Joe Blow. And I would have said, ah, like I said, I'm not interested. But he said King Kong Bundy. He said Chris. Chris and I are very close. He said, when is it? I'll be there. I walked in. Saw Chris. We saw each other start laughing. Hug tight. Sat down. What have you been up to? What are you doing? Bruno came over. Childhood hero. Spent an hour with Bruno. Bundy said, just move on the avalanche and cover me. I said, what are you out of your mind? He goes, no, Mario, I have to pay you back for what you did for me in New York. We referred to the WWF as New York. So yeah. we never said WWF. We just said New York. He goes, I have to pay you back for what you did for me. I said, no. He said, why do you have, have such a hard head? I go to give you the avalanche, move. I'll hit the buckle, take the bump and cover me. I go, no. Not doing it. He goes, God, you got to be such a bastard for it. I said, listen to me. Let's take the friendship out of the, out of here. Let's take the friendship away. Let's look at the characters. Mighty Mouse doesn't go over on King Kong. Just doesn't happen. Mighty Mouse is just not going to beat King Kong, and I won't do it. And I did a job for him that night. I took the, the avalanche and the splash in, in the five count, and it was done the way it was supposed to be done. But Bundy wanted to repay me for what I did for him in New York. Why? Yeah. Why? Respect. That doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I don't deserve respect. I don't deserve respect. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares. No. No, you're, you're wrong. I am wrong. a fleet. Listen. I am a flea on the shoulder of the wrestling business. That's what I am. It doesn't matter that he showed me respect. It doesn't matter. So now, years go by, and this kid gets a hold of me to train him in 2010 i said yeah love to train you kid don't have a building don't have a ring he bought a ring put it in his backyard he wasn't trainable he couldn't get, he, he had it in his head but didn't have it in his heart and in order to be successful you have to have it in your heart if you don't have it in your heart you're not going to do it then 2014 comes open up paradise alley Get Roma back in the fold. You know, I've been talking about this to Roma because he's temporarily been uh, my roommate in my house for a week week now. It's getting all worked, it's getting all worked out, though. <laughs> it's getting all worked out. Um, so I start going to these conventions. I go to New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. In 2013, in 2014, I, I I meet 
I meet, um, I meet um, a lot of my friends there, and I see all my old friends. We have laughs. We, I met a couple of guys that were in the WWE. They came up and thanked me for what I did back in the 80s. Um, I became very good friends with Matt Stryker, who thanked me. Um, I ended up booking Bull James on one of a Paradise Alley show, and we hit it off immediately, like we've known each other for 20 years, because he was old school. He had the mentality of the guys from the 80s. He carried himself from the guys. So I, we, it, it was just like magnets. You know what I mean? Just get along with the guy famously. Yeah. I, I love Bull James. I love Matt Stryker. Both of them thank me for my contributions to professional wrestling. Which I've none. <laughs> Zero. So it doesn't uh, matter. It doesn't I matter. I think it, it might matter. be a bit harsh. Don't care. Don't care. It was proven to me. Now, this is what I've decided to do. I have now compartmentalized professional wrestling. I have now put myself in a bubble. I don't care what happened from 92 on. I don't know them. It's none of my business. I don't care. They want to come up and say hello to me. I'll shake their hand and say, hi, nice to meet you. That's it. Because why should they care so much to want to meet a jobber? See, I wasn't over. I wasn't in WrestleMania. I had a personal appearance last Saturday in Massachusetts. The minute I hit the entrance of that room, Tony Atlas said, Mancini! Mancini! I said, wait, I'm old. I got to go to the men's room. I'll be right back. <laughs> and my table was right next to Tony's. I told Tony the whole story. From the last podcast. From the last podcast. Yeah. And some of the responses from the last podcast. And Tony gave me his opinion. And I won't share that opinion because that's between me and Tony Atlas. Yep. Okay. But I told him the whole story. You know, Tony, they sit there, he'll listen. He's got to take it in, so he really doesn't look at you. He just, he's just like this. Yeah, you know, listen to the whole thing, and then he'll go. And he gave me his opinion. My close friend Tony Atlas, a WW Hall of Famer. That doesn't matter. So what? That doesn't matter. Not when it comes to me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. So, next Saturday, I'll be with Valentine, Beefcake, Demolition, Ted DiBiase, Danny Davis, Barry Horowitz. These are my people mine and that's why i felt when i walked into that auditorium last saturday when i saw tony i said there's my person my people okay they're the ones i grew up with in the business they're the ones i'm going to stick to and they're the ones that have respect 
So anything after 1992, I don't want to discuss it. I, I don't, I wasn't there. I only know what I know. I only know what I know. I don't know the attitude era. No clue. Mm -hmm. I just want to say pro wrestling as a whole, the entire history of the business, there's only a handful that have the right to have a God status. Meaning this, Maurice, they were born. They they were absolutely, meaning, let me put it to you this way. They didn't need Vince McMahon. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't need him. So I always loved Vince McMahon's philosophies and I love the way he ran the business back then because he would take a guy who's over six months and you know, whether it was gorilla monsoon or Arnold Skolin or chief J strongbow, you know, all these guys I worked for and you know, my relationship with chief, I was like a son that doesn't matter. When I worked for these guys, they would advise me, teach me. It's the only thing, it's the only thing that I know. Blackjack Lanza, Pat Patterson, Terry Garvin. These are the guys I know, and and that's the business that I know. So the reason why I loved Vince's philosophy is these agents, if you get a guy that's over for the past six months, and I mean over, I was never one of them. I was hoping I was one of them one time, but he would it'd be a house show and there'd be a jobber there. And the agent would say, you're doing a job tonight to the guy that was over. Yeah. And he'd go, what? What? Oh, what do you mean I'm doing a job? You're doing a job for him. You're taking it in the middle, one, two, three. Well, well, I'm not doing that. The response they were looking for is, how long do you want me to go? How long's the match? How long do you want us to go? 12, 14? What's the finish? Hey, jobber, come here. What's your finish? Driver, okay. All right. They call Vince up. They go, he was fine. They did the finish. He took the three. He was all smiles, came back, shook the guy's hand, said, thank you. There was no change in his, his demeanor at all. Vince would say, I got the right guy. Yeah. Now, when they come back and go, I'm not doing a job. What do you, what, Vince, he get hot. Why? And this is for all 90 Five percent of everybody that was in the business, because Vince took you. Vince gave you a gimmick, and Vince put you over on national TV. So Vince made you. He made you, and you're making money. You're making money. How can you hate this man? How can you have anything bad to say about this man? He took you into the biggest organization in the world, wrestling organization world, gave you a gimmick or let you come into the territory and use your gimmick, put you over. And you're making money. I don't understand the attitude. Now, 
there are a handful of guys that didn't have to show that gratitude. In my opinion, and they're very few, Andre the Giant, a guy I call the natural. I call him the natural. That's Stone Cold Steve Austin. He could have went anywhere and did that. Anywhere and did that. And, he, you know, just, he's a natural. He, he was, God put him on this earth to do what he did, you know? Yeah. Just a natural. Dwayne Johnson, not, not that. He not that he had a birthright in the business. I was I was good friends, very good friends with his father. Doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. When I I started watching Dwayne Johnson's YouTube videos probably four years ago, and I found myself laughing hysterical. I go, this. This guy's good. He's singing songs to Guerrero and rhymes, and he's got the eyebrow and the, you know, and he's yeah. got the smell and he's got the, I, and I see the whole arena and he's got them right here, right here. He, he could have went there anywhere and did that. I don't even consider Hulk Hogan. It's those three guys and and Bruno. Bruno probably could have done anything he did because at the time, Bruno was enormous, number one, physically. Number two, the only guy who at that time who benched 565 pounds. Uh, and if there was another territory in the East or a territory that was a predominantly Italian, he was going to draw. I believe in my heart that superstar Billy Graham could have did what Hulk Hogan did. I believe he could have, and I believe yeah. he could have been as hot. I, I really do. I think he could have. Not that I have anything against Hulk Hogan. I just think, and if I did, nobody would care. I'm a flea on the shoulder of the pro wrestling business. Nobody cares what I have to say. Nobody certainly cares about my feelings. So not even him, you know, the Hulkamania and the whole thing. And, you know, you got to remember something. If I'm wrong, you know, he worked with Andre the Giant and Shea Stadium in 1979, did a job, right? Every time he'd come into the territory, he'd work with Andre and do a job. You know what I mean? So he was at the right place at the right time. You know, did the Rocky three, and it, he cashed in on it. Good for him. I I, yep. I like I like Terry, but he's not one of. I don't consider him one of the gods. One of the the people that no matter where you went, it was going to happen. It yeah, was I think happen a lot. Where, yeah, I th I think a lot of people would kind of agree with you about Hulk. A lot of people were always kind of not big on his his in ring work because it was very um labored and it was kind of the same all the time and then when john cena came along people said this is the new hulk hogan you know it right. was that kind of right. that kind of um style i suppose that he didn't really have right so you know? why do i say this because everybody else everybody else should be humble, should be thankful because it was Vince McMahon. I've done so many podcasts when I said Vince McMahon allowed me to be in his organization from 84 to 92. And the, and the operative word there is allowed. He could have looked at any Garvin or Patterson at any time and say, I want Mancini out of here. I don't want anywhere. He never did. I walked away. He never did. So did you have did you sorry Mario? Do you did you have any interaction with him when you were saying that you were walking away from the business? 
Well, well, yeah. And and he said, well, how old are you? So I'm going to be 20. This was April of 92. I go, I'm, I'm going to be 26 in June. He goes, well, uh, old man there, Mario. He called Mario. I said, still though, man, I, eight years, I did a lot of bumps. Because when we first broke in, we were curious. And this is what Strongbow said. He goes, put five years in, you'll get a push. Put five years in, you'll get a push. Okay. Howard Finkel used to go, let Mario wrap somebody in a small package out of nowhere for a three count over somebody. The police will go crazy. I used to sit there with my shoulders up to my ears going, what are they going to say? Doesn't matter. Nothing I did. It doesn't matter. It's been proven to me that it doesn't matter. So anything from 92 on, I don't care. I don't I wasn't there. I don't know you. Now, let me tell you off the last podcast. Yeah. Let me tell you the truth. And I'm right. I'm going to give you what we used to say in law school. We lived through law school through hypo hypotheticals. Yeah. That was the whole damn time in there was nothing but hypotheticals. You and I are working together at WrestleMania. You come over to me two weeks after WrestleMania and tell me your payday for WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. I, like a foolish stooge, tell one other person what you got paid for WrestleMania. He's on the same level as you. He's been there just as long as you. And he got less. You know what you owe me? You owe me a receipt. The next time I work with you, you should give me a stiff forearm, right to the face, grab me in the front face lock and go, next time keep your mouth shut. Because I expose that inside the business, the wrestling business, because I didn't break into the entertainment business. I broke into the wrestling business. That's another difference in generations. When I broke into the business, I broke into the wrestling business. Yeah. I didn't break it, into the entertainment. It, it wasn't until it wasn't until Turner bought WCW when he called Vince and said, Oh, I, I'm in the wrestling business. And Vince said, Good for you, Ted. I'm in the entertainment business. He he developed that well then. Mm-hmm. But his father's organization, who died, I think, a month before I broke in, was still lingering. So I broke into the wrestling business. So it's inside the wrestling business. It has to do with the wrestling business. It has to do with paydays. There's a dressing room full of the boys getting paid different money for different things. And now I brought you heat because you might have got paid more than somebody else. I might have brought heat to somebody else because you you felt you got paid less than another person. I committed a sin. It's 2022, Maurice. I can go on here. And Google how much Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio got paid for for Titanic. Yeah, this this is in relation to a figure that was said about a certain performer in the last right. podcast. That, I can that, go on that, here. I can go on here. Yeah, and Google how much DiCaprio made for Titanic. Yeah. 
Okay. Now, personal appearances, movies, you know, how much how much does a rock make per mo- per movie? Pfft, here it comes. It's 2022. Now, when I made that comment, do you think I made it up or I how do you think I found it out? No, I said it to you. I said I, I know that because I heard it from a convention in Liverpool the previous couple of years. You know what I mean? So Yeah. What well, you know And I and I actually and I actually looked at a an upcoming wrestling event and the pricing kind of confirmed the same well, thing. Like all the all the prices are the same. It, it, it's 2022. Yeah. I, I mean there's a big now. What what's not, and it's funny because Romo was on the couch and he goes, Hey. This is after thirty eight. Uh, after thirty eight years, he goes, "Hey, this is how much I got paid for WrestleMania." And I went, oh, "Pretty nice. I'll take it to the grave." He told me a payday. He got within the wrestling business. He could still get heat for it, for all I know. You know what I mean? He got what in inside the wrestling business, performing as a wrestler for the same company as everybody else. That's a big difference. That is kayfabe, which is dead, but it's yeah. still it's kayfabe. So, I don't think I did anything wrong. But that, that doesn't matter because I am Mario Mancini. I am a jobber. I am a guy that went out there and got the living snot knocked out of him. I'm the guy that got cow tied by the Funk Brothers and had my trunks pulled down to my ass and got stamped with an ink branding iron yeah. that said FB, Funk Brothers. Okay. And there I am in the shower with soap trying to wash it off my ass. <laughs> Okay, I'm I'm the one that went in there and got my mullet cut off by Beefcake, my hair thrown in the air, spray painted by Adrian Adonis, had Jake Snake crawling all over me. <laughs> but you know what? So what? And you know what? I'm back to 1992 because I I believed all the hype. It got to me. I'll admit it. The hype got to me. Okay, which brings us back to the beginning of this podcast and the question you asked me. So I have Big Daddy. You know, I have fans. I have people going, hey, you were this one's first match and that one's first match and that one's debut match and that one's debut match and you know, everybody's dying and there's not a lot of you left. And uh, you guys are like a novelty now. And, uh, uh, and you know, jobbers are becoming more popular now. And, and, and you know, as far as nostalgia and all this other stuff, you're really selling yourself short. And I bought it. And I bought the wrong stuff. Because I was reminded that it's 1992. And I'm nobody. And even the comments, um, you know, on some thread that said, I don't even remember this guy. And this guy's just a coat tailor and all, you know. Mm. Uh, listen, I, I'm I'm not gonna I, I don't I don't I don't have the wherewithal nor nor do I have the knowledge to turn this camera around and and put my law degree on this on this podcast. I don't need a coattail. I don't I don't need a coattail. Trust me. I do very well. I don't need the coattail. I don't need the recognition when I got out of the wrestling business in, in 1992. 
I considered myself nothing. The only reason why I thought maybe I was something, I made two or three encyclopedias. Maybe it was nostalgic. Maybe, maybe people do care. I was reminded quickly and swiftly by the business itself that I'm wrong. So I'm back to 1992. I really don't think anything was a big deal. I just happened to work with those people at that time. And I got them over. I got paid and I went home. So what I'm looking forward to is my bubble. You know, DiBiase, Demolition, the Honky Tonk Man. Valentine, Danny Davis, Barry Horowitz, you know, um, the, the, the Legion of Doom, you know, all these guys that I know personally, Tony Atlas, Tito Santana, guys that when they see me, they have a smile ear to ear and we hug and embrace and we laugh our asses off that those are my people. That's my generation, and that's what I'm doing. Because you know why? Nobody cares. And that made me say, yeah, I don't care either, bro. I don't care. So what? So what? Go on YouTube, watch me get the daylights knocked out of me. I don't care. I don't care. That's what I did. Did I want to do it? No. No. Did I wish Vince McMahon took me into his graces like I asked him to, to put that tool belt around my waist and that hat on with the M on it and call me Super Mario Mancini? Yeah, I was dying for it. He just didn't want to pay Nintendo. <laughs> I think that would, have, uh, that would have been cool, though, in fairness. Oh, yeah. He didn't want to pay Nintendo. So that went down the drain. But... I I uh, I apologize. I am I am the lowly jobber, uh, an insignificant part of of uh, the wrestling business in the history of wrestling, um, and I'm just glad I was thrown a few crumbs uh, in my life um, to be fortunate to be with the WWE. Um, for eight years and uh, you know i wasn't stuck you know trying to make my way up there that i i was lucky enough to start out there and end there and um you know i i appreciate the crumbs that that were thrown my way yeah you 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 mentioned earlier about like a lot of people dying and obviously scott hall passed away just last week did you did you ever get to meet scott I did. I, I, yeah. I met Scott. Scott was a good, he was a great guy, funny guy, good guy for the dressing room. Um, yeah. You know, it, just a freak accident, um, a, a freak situation. I went, I went through something similar uh, recently. Um, and, you know, just to get those blood clots after surgery, you know, Maurice, not a lot of people know this, but um that podcast I did with you in, um, I don't know, maybe the end of January that I, I was hobbling to my dining room table because I had, I had lost a toe. Yeah. I just got out of, I just got out of surgery and I had lost a toe and, and I had good spirits about it because it was the second toe on my right foot and it's not a balanced toe. So I had good spirits about it while I was in the hospital. I had good spirits about it the whole time. Um, the one time I did get scared is when they get, got me, came to get me after surgery. And I go, where are we going? And they said, well, we got to go and we have to give you a CAT scan on your chest to make sure there's no blood clots. And that made me a little nervous. So when I heard yeah. that about Scott, it really, it really hurt. It really hit me, you know? Uh, um, but you know, he was, he was a fantastic guy, man, just funny and, you know, took things lightly and he was just a really, and he was a great worker, just a really good guy. And, uh, it very sad, very unfortunate. And I know, I know Kevin Nash is still devastated, you know, 
so um, it's it's just very sad and unfortunate, you know. You've got a few things coming up. Um, I see yourself and Paul are doing like a WrestleMania thing this weekend, like a screening or something. Is it? Is that what I seen? Well, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll be in uh, Holbrook, uh, New Jersey, um, doing um, a signing um, on uh, on Saturday. It's a it's a WrestleMania thing in a um, in a collectible store. And uh, we'll be there and um, signing autographs. And then it, uh, I think it's April 23rd, I'll be doing, I'm going back to Newark, New Jersey, to do a virtual signing for four hours. Um, and then May 7th, um, we're going to be uh, in New Jersey again for the 80s, a big 80s thing. And that's where I'm going to see Demolition and DiBiase and Valentine and Beefcake and Danny Davis and I'm I'm gonna see all of my people, all my people in my professional wrestling bubble. In my bubble, because that's where I'm staying. Yeah, obviously, um, it's kind of hard to talk about it but like in in summary for me to say mentioning the said figure did not go down too well with certain people that you've bumped into at recent things is that fair to say well yeah i mean things were said things got back to me and you know what like i said i explained to you the difference you know Making a working inside of the wrestling business, which is an, to do, which is a no no and taboo. Um, and and then outside of the wrestling business, I mean, it's um, but I understand, and um, I'm not I'm not here to piss anybody off. Uh, and um, you know, I I just I'm I'm gonna remain in my position as a flea on the shoulder of the wrestling business. And, um, you know, Lord knows they'll never have, uh, uh, nobody's going to come up with the idea one day of, Hey, you know what? Let's take a certain member of jobbers, um, because they were a part of the wrestling business at one time. And let's, let's decide who's going to go into the hall of fame. That's never going to happen. Uh, so that even confirms that, uh, just a flea on the shoulder of the pro wrestling business, you know. It's it's, it's uh, you know, I'm I'm not in the Hall of Fame. I, I wasn't over. I wasn't in SummerSlam, Survivor Series, the WrestleMania. I was never in one of those. As I said, when I got out in '92, I didn't think it was a big deal. I forgot about wrestling and I left it behind me. Um, and 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 that's it. I'm going back to 1992 mode. Uh, with the exception of my wrestling company, Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling, and, and running my wrestling shows and trying to help these young kids live their dream. Um, you know, I, these, these uh, you know, I Scott Wilder wants to book Roma and I for California next year um, for that fan fest before WrestleMania, um, which I'm sure you're going to. Um so, well, if, if 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 I'm allowed, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I I just I you know I don't want I just I just want it wherever I go, wherever I go, whatever state I go to, I just want to see my people. I just want to see my people. I don't I don't know anybody else. You know, I don't I don't know anybody else after 92 other than Matt Stryker and Bull James. That's it. I, I don't know anybody else. I, I, I haven't met anybody else. I, and and that's that's fine. I, we can keep it that way. I don't I don't uh, you know, I don't want to hear any more about debut matches. I don't want to hear how important that was or this or how nostalgic or because it meant 
nothing. Zero. I think we'll wrap it up there. And the next time we talk, we'll talk about stuff, the, everything before 1992. Go back to some well, happier times. Well, I got a, I got a, I got a lot going on there from '84 to '92, and um, and uh, it's all, it's all great stuff, and um, you we know, maybe to, we'll, we'll we have to get, jog your memory. Well, oh no, it's all there. Believe me, B- believe me, it's all there. I, I, and you know, maybe we could even get in some racy stuff. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe we can even get some racy stuff. I mean, it, it was a it was a wild ride. Yeah. So the, you know, the H bomb was alive and well. Not that I used it, but yep. um, <laughs> taboo. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, some taboo stuff. Why? I was there. You know what I mean? Why not? It's not like I'm making anything up. You know. Yeah. Thanks a million, man. Hey, listen, man, have a blast. Stay safe. Don't bump into Joe Biden by any, re- by any means. Stay He's very safe. popular, isn't he? Uh, yeah, yeah. I hope, yeah. I hope you have a great time. Yeah, I'll wear my green cowboy hat. Yeah, you're going to look great. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right, brother.